Hello everyone. My name is Peter Steinberger and today we're going to build a full blown PDF viewer in just about 40 minutes. Now this talk is live recorded. I'm not going to do any editing. I'm going to start my timer for 40 minutes and we see how far we go. Now to make this simple, I'm only using stuff that's available in iOS 14 and Mac with Big Sur to have this built with at least code as possible. You will learn how to build document-based apps in iOS 14 and Swift UI, how to use Apple's PDF kit to show a PDF. Then we want to have more features, so we switch to PS PDF kit, which is a framework my company builds. And since neither PDF kit nor PS PDF kit play nice in Swift, we're going to write a really, really good wrapper in Swift UI. And of course, um, the main focus on this talk is about this wrapper. So we learn a lot of tricks how to marry UI kit and Swift UI. Now, if you want to learn more about the things I've built, I have a website and stipede.com. And most people already probably know me from my Twitter with at stipede, the same name. Now let's get going. And as I said, we're going to do live coding here. So expect that I might stumble up sometimes. First off, we gonna create a new project. You will see something very quickly here. We use a, a document in this app and we call it PDF viewer. Now here you see that we're gonna use Swift UI for the interface, Swift UI app lifecycle, which is brand new. And for the language, we really don't have a lot of choice, right? Um, usually you should include tests, but since we are on a clock here, we will skip those for now. Now I'm going to create the project. And the first thing we want to do is we want to launch it and see what we all have here. The, the template we, we use here created three files. There is the, the PDF viewer app, um, which uses a new feature called document groups which is a scene. So the whole thing supports multiple windows right out of the box and also supports the UI document browser view controller. So you see that we already started with the document browser. We have exactly nothing on this iPad because I just resetted it for this talk. So to have something, I'm just going to drag in a PDF, the files that opens, and I can store it on the device. But we can't open it yet um, because the template Apple has here is for text. And you see that we have a, a document and we have a content view. Now, I'm going to be honest, the first thing I do with SwiftUI is I delete the previews, those live previews. Really them are great, but whenever I try it, they don't work for me. Um, so I'm just going to use the simulator because that's something that I know usually works. Now, the first thing we do here is we change the document to no longer deal with text, but deal with data. Because that's how we can represent a PDF. Now, I'm just gonna tweak everything here a little bit. Our UTI tab is PDF. The file wrapper is the function that eventually deals with writing this thing back to disk. And I'm going to forgot the self here. Everything looks fairly good. And of course, we can't use a text editor here. Um, we just use a use a label for now. We just want to oh, see that this is working. Document, data, size. Let's 
let's see where we have. Oh yeah, it's count. Ah yeah, we still have one error because we, we changed the, the default initializer. And I'm gonna summon a function here from my cheat logic uh, from my notes down there. So what we want when the initializers run um, without an argument is we want to have a blank PDF. A blank PDF is not zero data, it's some data. And we actually can all use like board utilities here. UIKit has a UI graphics PDF renderer. We give it the coordinates of an A4 page. I'm from Europe. <laughs> and uh, a default UI graphics PDF renderer. And then we just create one page and return that. So this is pretty straightforward code. Um, let's see if everything works. So if I now run this thing, we can open the PDF. We see that it has a, a certain size. And what I also want is I want to create a new document. Bam! And you see that it has 810 bytes. So that's probably like the, the boilerplate to have an empty PDF. We don't see it yet, but we will soon enough. Now, let's use PDF kit to actually get something going here. I'm checking on the time. Um, so we're going to do this right and create a new group that we call PDF view. And in there, we're going to make a new file that we called run roll. I know PDF view. And in there, we call it, I know, spectacular PDF view. But it's actually not a view, it's a UI view uh, representable. And if I import Swift UI, then autocomplete will play nice with me. And if I'm patient enough, Xcode will help me. And here, here the tricky part is, is we also need import PDF kit and use PDF kits PDF view. We, we have a name clash here, so we use the, the module name to this immigrate. <laughs> um, and now does it finally help us? Yes, Xcode gives us the boilerplate that we need here. And to wrap a, a view, it, it's fairly simple. We have two functions, make UI view. And here we call UI view type. There's a frame of zero. And on the update, we should do something. Ideally, we should set the document. Oh, we have the same issue here. But we don't have a document just yet. So while this compiles, uh, it's not great yet. We also need to change our document. So instead of using data, I now create a reference document and change this to PDF document. And the PDF document has a data initializer. And we are a little bit lazy here and just force unwrap this. Um, you sh probably shouldn't do this in production, but we're gonna cheat a little bit here to be faster. We do the same here for the second initializer that reads from a file. And for writing, honestly, we don't care yet. So I'm just gonna return something to make it work. And if we go back into our PDF view, um, no, let's first, check out the, the content view. We remove the text and actually show the PDF view. And we want to also make sure that the PDF view has a binding to our data. Uh, the struct automatically changes And 
oh yeah, here we go. Document, we pass on the binding. And then here in the update function, um, we use the referenced document. Now we run this and see if we get lucky. And ta-da, we can look at PDFs. We can also look at our empty PDF. It's fairly small, but that's okay. Now let's make this work for the Mac. You know, Catalyst is just a checkbox away. So we're gonna put the checkbox. We're gonna use the new Optimize for Mac interface because it's way, way cooler in Big Sur. Uh, you see I'm running Big Sur Beta 9 here. Had, you had a lot of fun updating everything yesterday. And it's also important that we make sure to set the capabilities. Now, we wanna select a file, so we add user selected files to read write, otherwise um, the app will crash when it tries to start up. Now let's see if this already works. It is compiling, we can close this one for now. And It's bouncing down there in the dock. Something's coming up. And here we go. We actually have an app and we can open a PDF. So here I have syncing in SwiftUI and already made an ugly drawing down there. I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> um, we can't drag a PDF in there yet for that we have to actually tweak the info p list a little bit. This is um, only somewhat relevant for our example, but here should be com Adobe PDF to actually make uh, things like open recent work. Currently, this is actually broken in Big Sur, but we hope that eventually, I hope <laughs> that eventually Apple fixes this. So. Since we have it now running for the Mac, we want to have more features. So what we do is here, instead of PDF kit, we now use PS PDF kit. And the first thing here is we have to integrate a dependency. Now this was broken in the first beta, but luckily um, Apple fixed this. So we can now use Swift PM to add PS PDF kit. And of course, <laughs> of course it fails. Uh, this never failed so far. So let's just really hope it works this time. Xcode Swift PM system is still a little bit fragile. Sometimes it doesn't like us so much. but it seems second time is a success. So next up, we want to change PDF view document, but first I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, there's a few extensions that will eventually land in our SDK that I prepared. Should now be here, yes. So what we do is we're gonna make a new group. We call it helper. And we put those. So there's like license keys. There's a few publishers that are really, really nice. Uh, so we don't have to deal with notifications. There's a convenient initializer. Um, things that you can take for granted in the future, but are just a little bit out of context for right now. So. Next up, we change PDF kit to PS PDF kit here. 
we're also gonna prepare that it runs on the iPad again. Um, actually, it's not p 3 document because we changed everything. It's just document. And we don't have to force unwrap the document here because our SDK actually manages uh, an empty state as well, or a state where the document is not parsable. So that part looks good. For writing, we can now access the data property of the reference document. And now we have to change the PDF view wrapper. Now it's no longer UI view representable, but I UI view controller representable. And actually we can just delete everything here. And we also wanna have UI. see if we get help here again. We want to wrap the PDF view controller and we get the stops again. It's really nice, just inserted the wrong way. Here we create the controller, just use an empty one. And here we update it. Um, gonna make this a little bit shorter. And same as before, the controller needs a document and that's our, oh, I deleted the document, damn it. Um, this was a binding because it can change in both sides. A PDF can navigate to other documents as well. And we use reference document here. All right, everything looks good. There's still a few small details we need to fix. So for the license, I'm gonna use an on peer modifier to actually set up the license. And now let's run this again. Okay, we're like 17 minutes in. Yeah, the UI document browser view controller sometimes is a little bit sluggish, but we click on it and you see that we have a nice UI here. And if I long press, I can actually already draw here. But that's about it. Saving doesn't work yet. So how about we change that next? Saving doesn't work yet. Saving works if we tell SwiftUI that our PDF viewer document changed. Now, how do we do that? This actually probably looks easy because I show you the solution now, but it took me many, many hours to really understand how the whole system works. You have to trigger a modification before the the document disappears, otherwise it, you use auto-saving, then I tried hacking auto-saving, there was a, had a lot of fun doing those, I eventually found a solution, then I scrapped all that and found a much simpler solution. So what we do here is we make a coordinator. Every, well not every, but most, um, your views of UV controllers that are wrapped eventually need a coordinator. Um, this, is a this is a class that stays alive and usually deals as your delegate and can store various things to communicate with the, the view. Uh, we just call it coordinator and just pass on an empty one. Here we have class coordinator. It will eventually need to deal with uh, an object to see protocol. So let's just use an object right away. And then we want to have a binding. Of course, it's not working because 
movies. So we use a binding here and then in init we pass on that binding. That's a little weird syntax. It is an underscore. We just have to remember that. And now we have a baseline coordinator that will get our document. And here in that coordinator, we can listen to the change events. And what we do here is we use an, a publisher every time an annotation changes because that's the main thing we want to save. So first of all, we get the document out. So let document is like document wrapped value. This is the, the SDK document. Then here we have an um, annotation change publisher that we want to sync in. Um, we don't really care what we do here. And then this is the magical trick that took me forever to find. We just set the reference document to itself again, and that triggers a save and that will make saving work. Now you see that there's a warning because um, we use combine here. So maybe we should also import combine to be good citizens. And we need to store this thing somewhere. So a good trick is to just use a cancel set that's part of the coordinator. And then we store it in that cancel set. Now let's see if this actually does the trick. We draw it, oops, draw again. And damn, you see that the thumbnail updated. So we actually managed to save. We can verify this by jumping here into the file wrapper. I'm gonna move this a little bit, or maybe maybe we just make it different color. Let's make it red. And as it jumps out, you see here that saving unsafe changes is triggered. And under the hood, there's a UI document and saving works. Now, does this also work on the Mac? I, we always want to like look at the Mac. Let's see and build. And we crash. This is actually a known crash. Um, there is an issue uh, which took us quite some fun time to discover. So SwiftPM has a bug where it just doesn't resign binary frameworks. Now, the exact remedy is a little bit of dark magic. You have to know the exact steps, but once you know, then everything works. So the first part is you have to insert a copy run script phase that's empty, but copies frameworks. And then the second phase, we add a run script phase and we just resign everything there. And we run it again. Magically, you see that the app is booting up and it works. So maybe we want to make this the orange, close it and open it again. And it is orange. So saving works. Awesome. Uh, let's continue. So what else would be cool? Maybe we want to have a custom label whenever we change the page. So we want to have a, a binding for the page index. I think that's, a, that's something that is a very usual request. Um, you want to have control over what page index is displayed. So first of all is we, we make a new variable. We use state. Um, PDFU owns it. So we use state here and, and later on maybe binding. 
and we just use page indexes as a fancy wrapper for an unsigned integer to be zero. Uh, actually, I'm wrong here. This is this. Uh, I want to have that in the content view first. Now let me think. What do we do next? Now we want to like. Um, of course, complaining. So now we want to pass that page index to the PDF view. So in the in the PDF view, we we use a slightly different syntax. We use var page index binding because we have an optional here. So we cannot use the fancy um, protocol wrapper syntax. And also we need an initializer. So first of all, the document is a binding of your document. And then we have the page index, which is a binding of page index, but it's optional and we also make it nil because we want to be nice citizen and have a easy to use PDF view that can be progressively expanded. It's kind of like what Apple does as well here. So we actually can use, I'm always getting this wrong. We use underscore document to set the binding here and the page index binding is page index here. Now in our content view again, we can pass in the page index. And now we wanna jump again to iPad because it's nicer. Of course, this is this is not yet uh, the full story. We also need to update the page index but you see that it already starts. Now we use the coordinator and make it so that it also receives the, the PDF controller. So a lot of type here, so I'm cheating a little bit. So I'm using a, a, a weak variable uh, so the coordinator knows of its PDF controller. And whenever this is set, we set up the page index binding. Um, to do that, we also need to have access of the PDF view, which is just a struct, so we can copy it in. And we're going to change our initializer to have it there. Awesome. In our, where we create a coordinator, we pass in self. And now back to the coordinator again. You see that um, eventually we have to find a point where we set the view controller we verify that it actually changed. And then we set up a binding, a publisher. Um, we use the page index publisher on the controller. And whenever the page changes, this one fires. And then we change the bindings value. Now, a dirty trick here is, is that this will probably also fire when we have received an update. So we just use a dispatch view main async to not make uh, Swift UI screen that we are updating variables while it is itself in an update mode. Um, again, you really see the, the pattern where we store things in our cancel set. Now, where do we set the PDF controller? Uh, in our update UI view controller method. So we check if the PDF control of the code is not yet set. And if that's the case, because we don't want to trigger this multiple times, we do set it. And update view controller is also the place where we want to synchronize our page index binding. So we, we check for if their page binding is actually available 
we check if the page index of the controller is different to the page index of the binding. We have to do that, otherwise we always trigger a change and that's uh, not great for performance. And if that's the case, then we update everything. So if I press Command B, I think everything compiles, but we still have to use it. So we use it in content view. I'm actually gonna be a nice citizen again. Every view gets a new file and we make a page label file. So we're gonna have a fancy page label here. Now that one imports PSPDF kit. We have um, is a view. Oh, that will not work until we also import Swift UI. Actually, we can. Foundation is implicit, so. And we implement the body as text page. Page index. Page index is zero based. Humans like uh, one based. So we just add one here. And then we still need a binding of the page index variable. And it's going to be of type page index. And maybe we make it a little bigger. Font style should be large title. OK, now we have our page label. And we want to use this in the content view. So use a set stack. Page label should be on top. So we give it um, oops, page index binding and we go for it. Still eight minutes, we can still do a few things here. Yes, and we see that it actually works. Now, we want to make this a little bit more fancy. Um, so you see how quickly you can actually make this into a really cool um, label. So what I did here is, is I added padding. I added a background. I added corner radius. I made it uh, visible and invisible based on opacity. I added a little scale effect, added a little blur. And then we use an on change modifier. So Whenever page index changes, we add a timer. It's in seconds of an overlay time. So the default is two. And when page index changes, we set it to two again. And then we use a timer. Uh, and whenever the timer changes, we, we decrement it by one. And we do this with an animation. So that's like a very, very simple logic to have something that I would say is pretty cool. And you see after two seconds, the page label just vanishes. Awesome. We have a nice page label. What else we want to do? Of course, we want to have a way to configure um, the PDF view. There's a lot of properties that, that can be set on the view controller, but right now, uh, it's, there's really no way to do that. So we modify our, our PDF view and give it a base configuration. So in PDF kit, everything is, there is a file used that's called configuration. That's the last property here, configuration, PDF configuration. And by default, we use the default. So configuration is set here. Then we want to set it as early as we can. Here is the base configuration. And we actually don't have to change anything. And now we could already use it. So here I could say configuration. PDF configuration, 
Um, oh yes, we need to import more things to get autocomplete. So and here I could say dollar zero. That's our builder. Background color is red. That's a pretty okay way to have configuration. Um, let's see if this all really works. And obviously red is probably not the color we really want in the long term, but you see that uh, it's red and it works. Now what we really want here is we want, we want to have properties down here. Um, this still doesn't feel as natural as it could. So we create a new file. We call that PDF view configuration. Yes. And we make this an extension of PDF view. And here I show you how this would look like. So here we have a property that sets the background color. The problem is, how do we actually do that? We have to change the existing PDF view structure and return a new struct. Now, this is a, a fairly common thing in SwiftUI. There is a really uh, useful helper we use. We call it den. And then we just add a helper that oops, does all that for us. So what this helper does is it it uses, uh, of course, SwiftUI. And again, always the imports. And UI kit is also there for UI color. Now, this copies our block where we configure the configuration uh, into the struct and then returns the struct. We actually need to define configuration modifiers, which is just a series of blocks. We do that here. And then later on, we apply each of them to build our final configuration. Now we set the base configuration here and in update, we are going to build the final configuration. We do that very early on before the, the page index setter. So we, we want to be like, smart. So first we build a new configuration. We check it if it's different than the existing one to not trigger unnecessary update calls. And if it's different, we call update configuration and apply each of those blocks individually. Now I know that's, that's like probably a lot to get your head around it, but you can look up that later on. I'm going to write a blog post about what exactly we all did here. Uh, I think it's a really clever clever way to wrap configurations. And if we now go into a into a PDF, into our content view, we can actually remove that again because it's not such a nice syntax. And just have background color and we use blue. In the beginning, I actually tried to use Swift color and then convert that to UI color. This is incredibly messy. There is, in iOS 13, you actually need to parse the description. In iris 14, there is CG color, but that's only available within a view context. And even that doesn't really work. So eventually I abandoned this whole concept and we're just going to use UI color for now. But you see that it's blue and everything seems to work. Now we probably forgot a little thing here. Um, if I use search and insert text, then SwiftUI updates our view here. And we can prevent this by setting edges, ignoring area to all. Um, that's going to be a much nicer concept. All right. So I'm going to add a few more configuration things from my from my cheat sheet here. Uh, 
And you see that we now can set a page transition and a scroll direction. And configuring it really feels very natural. We can have um, page transition, and we set that to maybe curl. We run it again. You get the very nice autocomplete, and you see if the compiler plays well, exactly what's uh, available. And here, this would be with a curl effect, but probably not so practical for. So maybe we just do continuous and do the scroll direction um, vertical. Awesome. Now, the most interesting part is we don't have any bar buttons yet. So let's add a new toolbar. So we just go to the set stack and add a new toolbar here. Um, we use the new iOS 14 toolbar API. We have a toolbar item. I'm just going to use an image for now. Uh, so we see we have something. But of course, we also need to hook this up with an action. So as you see here, when I um, start the app here, the button is dead. And now the, the really interesting part is that our PSP view controller already has an action that will show um, the outline with an outline bar button item. But we cannot use the predefined bar buttons because SwiftUI doesn't work like that. So what we do have to do instead is we have to like find some way to trigger an action. Now, there's probably like many ways to do this. I will show you one that I think is pretty interesting and I haven't seen it so much yet. So again, we create a new file. We call it PDFU action. And here again, we want to have 50 UI. I probably don't need it. We have an enum that we call action event. And for now it has like one, we want to extend the PDFU again. So we have our namespace. And then we write an execute function that takes an action event. and the controller because we know that the, the logic is in the controller. Now we switch over the action event. We have only the show outline case. And here we say controller outline. Um, oh wait, it's not a PDF document. We need PDF controller. We have the outline of course importing. We have a bar button item and we just want to like basically call target action on the bar button item. Don't deal with all the other things. We could probably like create our own popover, but it's all like harder than just using everything that's already in there. So I'm just going to use target perform. and perform the action on it with a sender of nil. We know that uh, target action uses zero or one parameters. In our SDK, it's always one, so we can cheat a little bit. Um, there is also code possible where you really detect this at runtime and do the right thing. But we are already a little out of time. So we now have a way to execute our action, but of course, um, not enough. So in our content view, we create a new pass through subject that's part of combine. So we have to import combine. And that one, we can send events that then should be routed into our PDF view. So our PDF view also needs to know about this publisher. Here we have the action event publisher. 
we add this as a, we don't even need a binding here, we just use the publisher and save it actions. Now we can in content view pass on actions. And of course it's not wired up yet. Uh, so it's also complaining that it needs combine. Uh, and it's not wired up yet, but we already know where to wire it up because we already have our coordinator. Uh, here it's not nil. And in our coordinator in the did set, we have enough space um, to wire up the action event publisher. So we check if there is actually an action event publisher set. Then we use a sync and get the event, make sure that we don't um, build a cycle. So we use weak on the controller. And in there, we use the execute function that we wrote with the event and the controller. And we again store everything in our cancel set. Now we go again to our content view. And instead of the image, we use a button. And the button calls send on our pass through subject for show outline. I know this has been a little bit fast, um, but you'll see in a second that this works uh, really great. All right, and you see that I tap it and it really shows the outline. The problem is it shows it at a pretty much wrong destination because it um, our UI kit control doesn't know what the sender is. And if, if it doesn't know what the sender is, right now the default is that it just uses the, the top middle, which is probably not the best default. But really, we want to give it the bar button item. Now, the problem is, how would we get to the bar button item? If we put a breakpoint in and click here, we see on the stack trace that it really uses a UI bar button item. Uh, and then there's like some UI bar item target and eventually it calls into Swift UI. So what I did here, this, this, of course, it's not like I'm presenting it you in two minutes, but this took me quite a while to figure out. Um, we have a few ways where we could uh, swizzle. Yes, I said the magic word, it's time to swizzle. Um, but your application send action to from for event is public. So we can probably hook in here and maybe we manage to get our bar button out. So when it comes to Swizzling and Swift, I'm using a library called Interpose Kit that I wrote a while back. It's also part uh, integratable with Swift PM. So we can just integrate it, wait a few seconds, and it's already there. Now, we make a new helper that we call the bar button watcher. And the bar button watcher should ideally save the bar button while we click and then also clear things out on the next run loop. So we want to use an initializer and then um, swizzle your application send event. So here we need to import UI kit and we need to import interpose kit to actually make this happen. The, the syntax you can just look up on the website. So interpose kit, I have a it's nice documentation. Um, unfortunately, we have to pass in a lot of signatures because uh, there's different conventions for the things we do here. But eventually we could say print uh, sender and what we also need is we want to make this a singleton yeah we don't care about the warning for now um, we're gonna make this a singleton and then somewhere in our content view maybe here we use an on appear 
and lazily initialize our singleton um, because it swizzles and it needs to swizzle things before we tap for it to actually work. Now, I know this is, um, looks scary, but it's actually, this is something that you can ship. It doesn't use any private API. It's fairly lightweight, even though send action is being used a lot. Really, for now, we're just going to call the original method. And we want to see if this is actually viable. So when I tap here, um, yeah, that's our breakpoint. But we see here that the sender I printed out is a UI bar button item. So what I can do is we just in, remove the print again and we cast it sender as a bar button item. And if that's the case, then we set the bar button item. Then we make this a, a static property, last bar button item. And I also added something in deed set that spins up a run loop and clears this immediately because we don't want to have a have that lingering around more than the current run loop where we are on. Now, there's still a few things in action that we need to change. So here we say uh, sender is any object because we need to pass in the sender. And then here we have let sender and we pass in the sender. Sender can be a UI bar button or a UI view uh, in, in our logic and how bar buttons and, and pop-up presentation works. And then in content view, we just gonna pass bar button watcher, last bar button item. Oh yes, we missed the argument call. Very evil persons and also a bracket, but pretty sure it almost works. Now again, this looks simple. This took me quite a while to figure out. <laughs> um, but we click on that button and you see that it actually anchored everything correct. Beautiful. Now keep in mind, this works for iOS 14's toolbar item. This doesn't work for the iOS 13 API on um, navigation bar items or something like that. Um, let's see if this also works on the Mac. Mac is always a little bit different. Ideally, it should use the same logic, but we cannot be sure if we don't test it. So again, it's gonna starting. We open our SwiftUI example and it Somehow works, but apparently it doesn't get it doesn't get the coordinates. Now, if we spin up uh, a user interface capture, it takes a little bit, and then we oops, uh, oh, that's not what we want. <laughs> um, Let's remove that popover and try again. Yes, now here we go. We want to like look at this and you see that it's actually a UI button. If we click here. So, so there's a bar button egg and then we have a UI Tamic adapter, hosting view, so we don't actually have a UI bar button item. That's why uh, our trick here doesn't work. Luckily, I encountered this already. And I have a second trick that can be used here. So the second trick to do that is we just embed our own UI view, an invisible one, and then we anchor the popover there. So I already wrote an anchor view. Uh, you don't have to read everything right away. This is also on, on, on GitHub. And what Anchor View does is we, oops, we use a set stack for an internal Anchor View that's just a basic UI view, and then it embeds a button. So when we change our button here to an Anchor button, and then instead of hard coding this, 
we say dollar zero and run the whole thing again, you see that the anchor button already is aware of bar button item watcher. It's either that or it uses the, the internal view, um, but prioritizing the bar button stuff because that's that's um, if that is set, then um, the view will be created, but it's invalid as a few Swift UI internals. Um, oh yeah, sometimes view view state restoration is a little bit weird. Let's try the whole thing again. You see, there's still some bugs in in Swift UI, especially on the Mac. Here we go. And we click here, and you see that it really nicely pops. Um, and we can also drag everything around. You see that, like, the fact that the popover can go outside of the screen is also like a really, really nice addition in Big Sur. This used to not, wasn't possible before, um, and really makes this already feel a little bit more Mac like. Now, this is about as much as I can get to here. We are at almost an hour. I apologize for taking longer than needed. Um, there could be a lot more that could be done here. We could add more bindings for view mode. We could wrap our delegates. There's a lot to do. Um, in fact, there's still a lot to do for me to before we can ship um, this update. But I hope you learned something today. Um, it was a pleasure to be at this conference. Thank you very much.